Okay guys, here we are. We're back again. We finished making our little little bump in the top surface here. And uh, now we got to cut the hole out for the wheel. So I'm going to go here to my top plane. And I'm going to use a tool that we haven't used yet in the class, which is this guy, the straight slot. The way the straight slot works is you draw the center line out and then you pull out from there and you get a perfect kind of pill shape. Now I'm going to try to move this, but you know when I drew this thing, I think I just landed a whole bunch of coincident relations on here, so I'm going to delete a bunch of that and just try to move it if I can. <clears throat> and if it doesn't work, I can always right-click on the sketch and turn it into a block. And when you block a sketch like that, it allows you to kind of group everything and move it around to where you need it to be. Okay. And then in your design tree over here, you can right-click on the block and go Explode Block. And now I think I'll um, put some sketch relations in here, just kind of seeing how big this thing is. Okay, 24.3. Perfect. And let's just see if we can adjust that a little bit, say 25. Perfect. And then I'm going to put another sketch relation here, 10. All right. Good news. Now. Excuse me, I've got my mouse right in front of me here, and I've got my calipers, so I'm just going to double check my measurements there. Actually, needs to be more like 14 across, and 25 is good on the length, but it's going to be a little bit wider, so we'll just say 14. I'm actually going to set it to like 12 and a half, just because I think it looks better, and you know, why not? <clears throat> it's not like this thing is going to get sent into Logitech to go into production or anything. One last measurement that I'm going to take is just how far away from the edge of the mouse is the hole. And it looks like it's about 15, 17. So the way to set that up is just put a sketch relation right here on the front of this point to here. When I said, I said sketch relation, I meant measurement. Here we go. So let's try 15 to start. And once again, we're just going to kind of take the take the wheel here. There she goes. Okay, good. Alright, so with that sketch laid out, we can just go ahead and do an extruded cut right through our model. We're going to go here in, in direction 1, we're going to set that to through all. We're going to flip the direction so it's facing up towards the model. And then we're going to use that trick we talked about before where instead of auto select under feature scope, we're going to just select the single body we want to cut through. And there we go. All right. So that's that. <clears throat> All right. Now I figure what we'll do is uh, take a look at what we've got going on here. Looks like maybe a, a chamfer or a little um, filleted edge would help. Let's see if we can get one of those to run across the thing. May or may not work. Start out with a one millimeter and see what we get. Okay. So it's really important to see what the fillet does in this sort of scenario, right? It actually eats away quite a bit at the edge and opens up this hole a little bit. So <clears throat> it's important to pay attention to that sort of thing. And pick a um, pick a size that gives you what you want, which again, our, as always, our goal is always the same. We just want to set up for a good light and shadow scenario. Okay, now I'm going to go here to the underside of this thing. And I'm just going to try this, and it's a gutsy move because you know I'd love to be able to put a chamfer on the underside of this. I'm not quite sure if it's going to work. Uh, right away, the first indication is that it's not going to work, but there you go, it's starting to go now. 
So I just need to change the size of that chamfer from the typical 10 millimeter where it starts down to one. And then let's try two. Yeah, I think two actually is gonna do the trick. And then with the chamfer, you gotta watch out because see this chamfer can kind of inch up towards um, the edge of the top surface. So you wanna kind of keep your distance over there. But that is good, just like that, there you go. <coughs> And then sometimes it's nice if you get lucky, you can put a little fill of a edge right on the edge of the chamfer. Just to soften it up a bit. Maybe a lot. Let's try one. There you go. Okay, cool. So that's looking nice like that. And I'd say we're ready to go now with a... Uh, with the final cut on this piece, top view. We're gonna grab the rectangle tool and we are gonna just pull out a rectangle. We'll make a big rectangle to start and then we'll use smart dimensions to kind of whip it into shape. Come on. Should be about a half millimeter. <coughs> I'm just going to set the center point of this rectangle vertical to the origin so that I know it's right in the middle of the model and then I want to put this guy up here I know that the slice I want to make into the thing is about 60 millimeters so I'll just use smart dimensions to tell um, this rectangle to be about five millimeters away, four or five millimeters away from the edge. And so that should do the trick. Good, so we'll go there and um, we'll just do an extruded boss base again. I mean, extruded cut. Flip the direction, set direction one to through all. Go down to feature scope, uncheck auto select, and tell it to only cut through this body all right now that's done now we can always go back to that cut extrude like say later when we put this into key shot and if we find out that we want that to be bigger or smaller in order to look more dramatic we've now got the smart dimensions to pull it off so we could say 0.75 just open it up a little okay and that is that feeling good about that so there we go. Um, let's just go to this edge here and I'm just going to fill it this out. I'm just going to go like this and like this and then I'll just futz around with these until it makes what I want. Like that and then we'll go fill it again one last time. And we have to pay real close attention to what this thing does up here because it can look kind of ugly. And also don't forget that you know the fillet tool will only give you tangency to face or G2 cur curvature continuity. So it'll be really noticeable on your model that you use fillets and it's one of the big indicators on like when, it, when you know a model was made in SolidWorks. There she goes like that and Let's see if we can add this edge into the mix as well. Look at that. After being a previous alias user, I can tell you that nothing feels better than laying down a whole bunch of successful fillets on your model. Now, I just made a big mistake. I clicked on the actual surface of the model instead of the edge. And so what happens when you do that, when you click on the surface of a model instead of an edge, is SolidWorks will then uh, trace the entire perimeter of that surface. See how it says face one over here instead of edge? And it will try to find all the hard edges on that surface and apply a fillet to them. And so that's why my computer freaked out a little bit there. It's no problem if you make a misclick because you can always right click here and just go delete and just remove that choice from the selection. And this time I'll just use better I'll just use a better click. 
right. There we go. We're good like that. We'll approve that. Okay. So, close. Messed up a little bit here. So, let's get back into it. We can right click on any part of the fillet and open the fillet tool back up. And we should be able to. Yeah, there you go. All right, cool. Perfect. That's that. We're going to save our work because I'm starting to feel like it's time to do that. Now, this piece is just about done. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Uh, we can kind of file this away. We may want to put some sort of a hyper microscopic fillet on the edge of this here so we can try that. Like I'd say, maybe like, let's start with an eighth of a millimeter, which is super tiny, and just see what that does. The reason why I'm a little bit hesitant here is because you have to remember that this piece is going to interface right up with the other piece below it, and you can see what it does here. It takes quite a bit of the real estate away from the edge of your model. It sucks that edge in quite a bit. So right away I can tell I'm not happy with that so I might just go like 0 0.0125 see if we can do that now that's a really really small fill and it looks like it's not even working let's do 0.1 okay we'll do 0 0.05 next and we're just gonna play this little game real quick see how little we can get away with 0 0.05 seems to be too much All right, 0 0.06 takes away a little but not too much just remember that that's there and if later on when we open up the rest of our model and we see that we don't like it we can always come back to it and edit it all right but we're moving right along here okay now we've got some work to do here if you look on the actual mouse that you're building you're going to notice that there's the wheel that sticks up through here but then there's also a little piece kind of like a cover that goes around the wheel that's going to fill up this hole. And so we're going to build that now, but we're going to use the edges of this <clears throat> body here to create curves that we can then use as um, solid body editing options down here on this bottom piece. Okay. So stay tuned for that in our next video, and we're going to keep going. Thanks for watching.